most part, those big restaurant chains. Um, uh, <laughs> this cat squeaks. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not paying close attention to him, he'll <laughs> let you know. He'll remind you. Um, so I, I wanted to be inspired again. And so that's why I started working with artists again. How do the artists inspire you? Like I said, I'm intensely visual, so it's 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 about beauty. It's about me. being submersed in in beauty and yeah, or immersed. immersed? Both. Both. I just want to be. I just want to drown in it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, well, light bulb went out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, if you look at the art that I, the artists that I work with, and the art that I am, am drawn to, there's always. There's, it's accessible on a visual level. That's very important to me. Um, I only work with one artist who's highly conceptual. Um, her name is Molly Alloy, and I just, she has a lot of art. She had a lot of art originally that was very visually interesting to me. And, uh, but she's, at heart, she's a conceptual artist, and she does some conceptual things, and that's fun also. But the all of my other artists are, um, their work is visually stimulating from the very beginning. And anybody on the planet, at least anybody on the West Coast of the United States, can look at it and have find something interesting to look at. Now, there's a whole lot of other layers about it, but if you don't get it, it's okay, you know? But the thing that, that when you choose an artist to work with, the, the thing that sticks out most is the art itself, the uh -huh. object that they're... That, well, that has to be the beginning of it, because oftentimes I'll start working with an artist and it'll be years and years before we make any money. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's okay, as long as I'm inspired. That's great. you believe in the artist. Yes, I also have to have a connection with the artist, especially if, you know, it's going to take years for to build their business. It's a huge point. investment, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a light... Uh, you're, you're, I mean, it's an investment. You're, it is. You, as soon as you say, okay, I'll work with you, you've invested something in that person. Yes. Yes. And the relationship is to be made and tended. And yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's what the artists need right now in Portland. Well, <laughs> yes, dur during that, that dry economic spell, we, yeah, artists. Well, I think, you know, there's a whole system in L.A., for actors, mm -hmm. then it's the same exact thing that you're talking about. I mean, there's management and agents, and but they all, I mean, once it's exactly what you're talking about. What you're doing yeah. for the artists is exactly what a management, a manager for an actor would do in mm -hmm. Hollywood. Is they they form the connections, they, you know, and then the actor's supposed to focus on their craft, and the manager's supposed to be out there hunting up, up dollars, you know. And right. I'm really surprised that something like that hasn't developed for artists well there there has been a system like that for artists for years and decades maybe i don't i don't want to it's probably been hundreds of years the gallery yeah has, has been that avenue and so the gallerist has customers and the gallerist helps artists um stay focused on their work and just uh, takes all the knucklehead stuff off the artist's plate and sells their work. And that's great, and it's worked great for a long time, but now with the internet and so many tools, digital tools, um, social media and so forth that you can use to promote your own work, mm -hmm. um, artists have been increasingly expected to do that part of it too right and we and talk about that a lot that an artist you, you can't only just create art you have to you have to become a promoter for yourself yes as well and you know um i expect my artists to do that too but the question becomes how do you do it how how do you learn those skills um there are workshops, there are YouTube videos, there are books, there are, there's tons of ways to learn it, but what we've, the, the way the economy for artists is moving is that we expect every artist to reinvent the wheel every time. Well, 
I've been doing this for 15 years. I've made tons of mistakes and learned from them. So what I'm offering artists is an opportunity to kind of get on the fast track. So I can help you get running right away, get your marketing plan up and going. I teach my artists how to do it along the way, but we don't wait until, you know, they don't have to, to take three years of seminars before they can do a social media campaign. I can do it next month. Well, the other aspect, I think, I mean, you talked about the gallery system, and I think there's a real disenchantment with the gallery system in a lot of ways. There's so many artists, and a lot of galleries and, and museums are so exclusive about what it is they want and who it is they want and what their clientele is going to be. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't really believe anymore that an artist can sit in one gallery or even five galleries. And, and I don't know, maybe they can make a living. But I also think that a lot of artists have ambitions to be much more than just a painter, you know, or a, a sculptor. I mean, they, we all dream about being... We create these things, but we also want to be the character that created those things, right? Well, uh, managing your your image, your brand, is part of moving toward your goals. You know, and if your goal is to be in a museum, that's great. But you need a certain image, not just your art, but your the artist needs uh -huh. an, a certain brand image in order to make it there, and. Um, and that's one of the things I help artists do. I mean, um, I have artists who are working toward the goal of being in museums. I have artists who aren't. Um, there are there are many ways of being an artist now, and um, we expect our artists now to to figure out how to do that. And it's 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 a big job. So I just want to help. <laughs> <laughs> so. You want to show us some of the people that you're representing? Sure. Yeah, you want to take a tour? Yeah, let's take okay. a look. All right, well, really quick. Sure. We have these that we can show off from Jesse. Jesse Fox. Fox. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, uh, Jesse is um, doing great this year. Um, she's at Saturday Market every weekend. Well, not anymore, because not until March anyway. Right. But... Um, she started um, drawing these uh, what if critters um, in uh, about three or four years ago when she was <laughs> a uh, counselor at a drug and alcohol rehab facility for kids. Nice. And um, she was a counselor <coughs> and it was a residential facility so the, the kids couldn't leave and in order to entertain them she would draw these crazy matched up <laughs> characters and the kids would you know suggest things like hey, hey Jesse you know wh what would it look like if you you know like a uh, manatee and a kitten and <laughs> cats had you know babies or if a shark and an octopus of course the shark is famous now from the movies but um, yeah so she's doing really great and she has the block prints um, that she does at Saturday Market and first and uh, last Thursday, and um, the and magnets. I got a magnet. <laughs> I got a collectible. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. And her really her cute. work is going to be up at Cup Coffee starting today. Jessie, actually, not Emily. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> uh, Cup Coffee. Cup Coffee Company, which is um, on Interstate and Lombard. Interstate and Lombard. That's going up today, and it's going to run for a month. Yes. Okay. That's right. Um, we should look at this one here to All start. Right. With. I love that. This is uh, yeah. Move that plant. No, um, it's okay. This is uh, Suzanne Elizabeth. She was um, one of the the first artists that I ever started working with in 2000. Um, she gave me this painting. It's um, a view from uh, the San Francisco Bay. Um, underneath the Bay Bridge, and this is a famous restaurant called The High Dive. <laughs> Susie has this really moody feel to her work. Um, she paints landscapes and interiors, and um, all, they always have this kind of slightly nostalgic feeling. It's partly the palette she uses, 
but also just the, the sort of dreamy quality that ends up coming through in her paintings. Um, the colors are, are the, the, the subjects are kind of blocky with color. Um, and she can go crazy with the detail, but yeah. you know, a lot of times it's really nice when she stops at one point and it just has the sort of suggestion of the, of the scene. Does she work for photographs? Sometimes, yeah. Oftentimes she takes photographs. That, yeah. um, she works also from plain air, like she has a whole bunch of uh, series of work that she's done. Um, she did a whole series in my basement a whole series um, from my front porch um, in my old house. Wow. Uh, from the, um, she had a studio in a loft in Southeast that looked over Portland, all of Southeast and downtown. And she did tons of work from there and just out her window. And it's basically what she sees. Um, and it, there's, it's stunning work. She's, yeah. she's got a piece at the new Marriott um, residence hotel in the Pearl District. This um, is, uh, say her name again? Suzanne Elizabeth. Suzanne Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful artist. And I can get you guys um, links to their websites too that you can put on. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this this one here is um, Thomas Malcolm Cook. He is um, a Portland uh, native. <laughs> he lives in Irvington. Um, and he's done this whole series of Portland bridges and this sort of abstracted way. Um, I love the starkness of his work. It's it's almost like the um, Hawthorne Bridge in a blizzard, uh -huh. you know? Yourself. Willamina's is talking. <laughs> oh, you wanna have a conversation? Hello, Willamina. It's okay. Hello. You can interrupt. <laughs> um, I love the, the, the well, he's got this surface going on underneath it. Yeah, there's created a lot. with drips. Yeah, there's a lot of texture in there. There's charcoal. Charcoal. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume it's acrylic. It may be an oil. Charcoal, acrylic, um, and graphite. So he does a lot of like graphite drawing underneath, right, right. and then builds it up with with big smudges of charcoal and then acrylic paint. That's very cool. Yeah. This is, his work is so big and grand. It's too bad this one is kind of hidden back here, um, but it's so big and yeah. like, you know, I need my my furniture, so I'll turn this light on. This is um, Zedekiah Child. He is also a Portland native, but he lives in the Bay Area now. He lives in San Francisco. And this piece was at the Red E about a year ago. Um, we have a show coming up for him, another show at the Red E. Um, soon, so I'll get you information about that. It's the Ready Cafe. Yeah, the Ready Cafe, one zero zero six North Killingsworth. Yeah, it's a great venue for uh, art. So we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's um, it's a gallery, and we're promoting it now as a gallery. It's also a coffee roaster, and um, <coughs> yes, and Willamina comes to the shows there. Um, Mindy Farley and <coughs> Keith Miller on the. <coughs> <laughs> Sit down. Mindy Farley and Keith Miller, mm -hmm. they own the yeah, Ready. They're the owners of the Ready. Um, they do the coffee roasting and um, I uh, do the art. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's see, this one here. This is um, Dane Eisenhart. And, you know, <laughs> the the art in here, like the the Zed Zedekiah Child piece, is like it's stuck back there. That's because most of this stuff is just in storage. This is all. Oh, you're you just know, storing it right I'm now. Just storing it. Um, the only one that I've shown you so far that I actually own is the one from Suzanne Elizabeth. But all the rest of this stuff is just um, it doesn't fit in my storage space downstairs. <laughs> so I put it on walls up here, and so it's constantly changing. So this is Dane Eisenhart. So you have your own little gallery in your I home. do have my own little gallery and my own uh, collection that I get to change all the time. <laughs> so um, Dane Eisenbart has a studio in the Falcon Art community and he is a self-taught painter. Um, he does a lot of allegorical work that's very hyper-realistic. Um, animals. Oil. Oil? This is oil, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, the colors, you can tell oil from acrylic because the colors are so much richer in oil. Yeah, absolutely clearer and brighter often. 
I mean, the, the level of detail in this bear is...